rotating ring-like devices where men with military equipment walk through and, and meet Raw on the other side and bring their nuclear weapons with them, no. They were used for passing information and passing inhabitants this direction. Oh, by other cultures coming this way, but not by us. By, by, by P plus 45s and P plus 52s, both Orions and J-Rods. The treaties were basically inflicted on us by the Orions. As they were enforced upon us by the Orions that we needed to do what we needed to do when they figured out that we weren't able to handle the issue ourselves, they looked at their own history and said, huh, look at the cavemen and women. Then I found out that because he had carried the, the, um, the attitude that the Magi were not closely watching anything which it was like NEOs or any, you know, the near-Earth orbiting asteroids or anything like that. They weren't concerned about it at all. Well, then subsequently during a conversation, I found out that in fact they were. The information from her relative was in fact that they were aware that there would be an Islamic attack upon the United States uh, as early, meaning they were aware as early as the mid-1990s that it would be coming sometime in the new millennium. Well, right on, smack on the beam. The Orions could trust us so much where they could hand us a cube and we misused it to the state that we misused it. Where they then had to inflict a treaty system upon us. But the moon's not like, you know, the most inhabitable planet. Uh, no, there. but it's the place that we're allowed to be right now. Okay. Do I sound like I'm weighing my words? <laughs> that our emotions affect our state, our physical state. That our, our orientation to the, to the energies which are available from the, the cosmos, if you will, uh, affect the state of our DNA affect the state of our health and they are applying that as a, an experimental protocol, a rubric if you will, to change the state of the people on board so that they can sample them for biological material. I have a question about the probabilities, Dan. The, the, the low probability... When just, you ask a question, I really yeah. serious. <laughs> the low probability, um, according to what I understand, what you said earlier is 19%. Is that still valid? Because that's still playing Russian roulette with, with one bullet in a barrel of five. Is it not? It's, that's, yeah. that's, and that, and actually it's, it's slightly worse than that. Okay. In all honesty, it's slightly worse than that because there's only an 85% confidence level to that 19%. So, so that doesn't quite sound like we can all relax. I don't think it's a, a, well no, I don't think it's a question. I think we need to, I think we need to do the right things. And, and there was a, a, um, uh, a correlation to the successful and unsuccessful outcomes which involved the people of the world being united in purpose for survival and for care for uh, our world. And that's the reason why we did this, this crazy thing and I, 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 you know, it sounded crazy, it looked crazy, but we did it because it was the right thing to do and I ended up having to send a team of people out canvassing the regular people of the world and handing flyers out stating that the time had arrived for us to pray for unity and I would still encourage that seriously and sincerely um, you know I, I, I lost people uh, I was in charge of, of a team and some of them died uh, as a result well a couple of them from accidents and that you know can happen anywhere but a couple of them were put to death for proselytizing and and so I bear that on my soul now. For put to death for proselytizing in a, in, a, in a country in a country where Meaning where China. Um, there was in fact two deaths in China, and we also uh, lost some people in Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. uh, and a couple other places. Uh, I didn't make public how many all we lost or how many all we had, but. Uh, they did their jobs, and the information was handed out, and we did the best we could. Anyway, uh, you were you were asking okay. about the you were asking about the the Stargate, uh, the possible locations and all of that, on on 
June 16th of 2003 in RV number 0403, uh, Deborah was requested to um, do a remote viewing session, um, a sole one, a series of them, in fact, that she conducted. And she uh, found several locations. Uh, among them was, in fact, uh, uh, Voloshanka. Uh, and she even said, to the north by the tundra in Russia. Uh, and in the uh, um, southwest, and Tibetan, southwest Tibetan mountains, I'm sorry, I'm still a little bit thinking about my men and women. Uh, in, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, Mosjen, M-O-S-J-O-E-N in Norway. And that was a, a big, big hullabaloo. There was one actually, uh, the equipment was actually removed from there. So what you're Syria, saying, Turkey. You're saying she remote viewed the locations of these, the, of the Stargate. In fact, she did. And, and the reason, the reason why I, I, um, reacted to pull this out. In your question, number nine, it says, how many LGs are, were there? How many man-made stargates? Where are they? And you gave a list of, of possible countries. In that list, you mentioned Bulgaria. Right. Well, on the second page of it, she's got the Pyrian Mountains in Bulgaria listed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, uh, I just wanted to kind of let you know. Thank you. And a couple points in Egypt, and uh, um, um, she... Uh, didn't, in fact, in this one mention Iraq because she was working separately for Iraq. On February the 4th of 2003, she did a, um, a special RV. RV. It says, I, I came up with the following in my session. I saw a place 10 miles south-southeast of Baghdad. This, by the way, is a place where we ended up actually raiding and removing what they thought were rings for what they called weapons of mass destruction. Well, there were rings, all right, but it was a different kind of weapon of mass destruction. I pictured a big tree on the ground surface of this location. Now think about how Saddam was finally found. Yes. Behind the tree, there was a hole in the ground that had a piece of wood over it. I saw a man looking and feeling like Saddam have a guard lift the wood over the hole. Saddam then entered the hole and jumped into what looked like a platform at the top of a set of stairs. In, in remote viewing, I don't remote view, but in remote viewing from everything I understand from her, um, time gets mixed up, overlaid, and sometimes yes. off-shifted. Yes. And uh, she clearly saw him in the, the spider hole. Mm -hmm. um, she also indicated that um, she found the uh, work area down there and, and in fact, drew the, the, the work area, which they ended up finding and finding the one gate in in Iraq. Okay. Interesting stuff, yeah, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we are kind of um, getting off the topic a little bit. That's um, good. <laughs> of, star <laughs> of Stargates and, and all that. Um, we am I causing that? that? <laughs> I'm sorry? So am I causing that? I hope not. <laughs> um, we know that Kayela escaped through a Stargate. Um, and with your assistance, that was described in our, one of our last videos. Yeah. Um, and ET went home. Yes, ET went home. Yep. And um, the interesting thing about that is that you also had an experience in which you sort of fell into the Stargate and mm -hmm. then kind of didn't go all the way, so you I was stayed in this reality. I well, kind of. Kind of. Uh, I was expelled uh, several yards away onto a, a slab of, um, it was either limestone or granite, I'm not really sure, or sandstone. I, uh, all I know is that it was hard uh, <laughs> when I landed on it. Uh, and it was on the other side of the tarpaulin over, um, the area was separated, human ET side, for the actual staging around the Stargate. It was the military operation. And... Um, I ended up on the other side of the of the barriers, which were like raised curtains, so that the people around the area that who were actual inhabitants of the area couldn't see. And I landed on that, and I moaned or groaned or was wondering where I was, and was in fact then approached by men and guns who were very upset with me. But okay, so but you saw the inside of a wormhole, right? Momentarily. Oh, I I I I can't really say that. Uh, 
uh, there was a gray curtain, uh, almost a misty type curtain, very similar to what I remember during the time that I was in a coma back in the 70s. Uh, and I saw certain things on the other side, but it, it was a flash, and that was about it, and nothing really remarkable to talk about. Okay, so you never went through, all the way through. I mean, I'm asking, did no, you, I was have you? No, I, I, mean, I, I did not end up, I do not remember ending up anywhere else. Have you ever gone through a no, Stargate no, no, in no, 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 and, and, and no, there, there are no rotating ring-like devices where men with military equipment walk through and, and meet raw on the other side and bring their nuclear weapons with them, no, no. Uh, there are, uh, yes, I'm being derogatory towards Serpo. Uh, oh, well, I thought that uh, we were talking about Stargate. Well, that's what Serpo came from. I mean, you know, okay. this list of, well, we've got our nuclear weapon with us and all of this business, and, and they could have picked something better than the name Serpo if they were going to go with it, but Serpo, is a, it's a reptile park in, what is it, Argentina or the Netherlands? Never it's the name of a reptile park. Uh-huh. And, uh, um... I think it was picked more more by the the former ops who were actually putting the disinfo together, and that what they did is they just simply took a name and they turned it backwards. It was Opress. Okay, it's but a there K, was no Stargate code. in Serpo, in 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 the Serpo story, as told to people. Okay. Okay, but there's, there's no Stargate in the Serpo. That's what I said. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so what I'm asking is. We have stargates, okay, that have been decommissioned. Yeah. Okay. Which access time travel technology. Yeah. Okay. These stargates, before they were decommissioned, we must assume were used. They were used for passing information and passing inhabitants this direction. Oh, by other cultures coming this way, but not by us by, going by, elsewhere? By P plus 45s and P plus 52s, both Orions and J-Rods. What about all the other, I mean, I don't know if you're party to this, but how many other races are out there? I am aware of one interdimensional species that won't speak with us directly and was communicating via the Orions, the P plus 52 Orions. That's it. Uh, okay, so you know, and I, I've been 20 years. This is it's confusing to me because I've got so many people with such great certitude, and I've been 20 years around these people, and either they were the greatest hiders in the world, even while drunk, and some of them drunk and recreationally drunk, and that's the way I'm best I should put that. Mm -hmm. uh, comes with large amounts of money sometimes they pay for products to make them feel good or whatever uh, I have never you know, it, it's been a joke I hate to put it this way but a lot of the UFO community like to them the stories have been a joke and and a lot of them have been proffered by the folkloristics unit in Majestic they actually promulgated a lot of these stories and now they hand me the bag to come out here and go, boo, you know, sorry, the boogeyman ain't real, I guess. I, I, okay. The only thing that I'm aware of are the P plus 45s and the P plus 52s. The intergrades between them over the 7,000 years between them cannot be contacted per treaty. The P plus 52 J-Rods and Orions I'm aware of and the P plus 45 J-Rods. At the time, the P plus 45s were around, they were unaware that the P plus 52 Orions, which would then be P plus 45 Orions, even existed. They didn't even know that they still survived at the time. And they only found out as a consequence of coming here in the treaty negotiations. Okay, but what about the, you're telling me the Stargates were only used one way by Used two by ways, but one way by, by transport for, for delegates in. Okay, they, and that was only that plans. was only under under extreme circumstances involving international uproar, where there were problems with the treaties. Aside from that, products were exchanged back and forth, and information was exchanged. But it was deemed too dangerous to be handing people back and forth regularly. These things collapsed, from what I understand, spontaneously, 
And if it collapses and you are not out one side or in the other, you're nowhere. Okay, so you're telling me that these people had such a conscience, they were not sacrificing Americans or other, you know, or, or military people to test the Stargates? No, no, the, the, the treaties were basically inflicted on us by the Orions. As they were enforced upon us by the Orions that we needed to do what we needed to do when they figured out that we weren't able to handle the issue ourselves. They looked at their own history and said, huh, look at the cavemen and women, okay? After we acted the way that we acted involving the, the, the cube and all of that business. They inflicted the treaty system on us. And they said, you will behave this way. We don't have the ability to just take a Stargate and to step through onto the other side without violating a treaty. They don't want us out there. We are dangerous. Okay. to ourselves. Okay. So why would we not be dangerous to another culture? They are sure as hell not going to let us off this planet. Can I ask you... Just ask about Montauk and about Henry's experience. Well, yes, um, but... That's... I still, believe it or not, I still have not read about what Montauk is. And okay. sitting here right now, I have zero clue what it even is. Okay, but, that's cool. What about the Philadelphia experiment? You're familiar with that? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm familiar with the reports of the USS Eldridge. Okay. I'm familiar with the unified field theory testing that went on. In fact, the unified field uh, theory testing did go on, but it made something which was, from what I understand, um, uh, radar invisible, but not involving everything that I've heard all of these other movies about people going back to uh, 1941 and prior to Pearl Harbor and all of this business and you know walk through the time tunnel and all of this. Uh, the information that I've heard from the military sources, because I asked when I was in there, because I knew about the Philadelphia experiment from way back from hearing about it, uh, that it was a legit experiment, that there was a legit experiment that went on, but it provided radar and visibility when it was an early, early cloaking system. And it okay, was electromagnetic it, cloaking. It, okay. Um, now, I'm, gonna, I'm wondering what, certainly Kyella gave you um, sort of, uh, like hidden cards in your hand that allowed you to get to, to get information from Majestic or to tw trade information with Majestic such that you would learn what was going on in terms of the Stargates and, and various I, and, things. And if I tell you that means I'm telling that camera right there. Yes. Mm -hmm. And okay. And but if if and that we one. recently and that one. we I you know I don't know if this is in the public domain but recently you found out that MJ1 had not told you everything yes. about a certain incident true okay which was a meteor incoming meteor that uh, it, yeah it was apophis and and the, the the big thing is is the the affidavit that I wrote and the dust up that happened between he and myself was based on the fact that he said, and I told him not to lie to me again, and the reason why I told him not to lie to me again, it involved the time period where I was told to keep my mouth totally shut because of timelines. Then I found out that it was a bunch of garbage, basically just to manipulate me to keep my mouth shut. And after that happened, then more votes were taken, and then I was told to talk. I was given the orders to talk. Yo-yo, okay? When that happened, I told him, don't lie to me anymore. Tell me it's none of your damn business if you have to. I can accept that better than being lied to. You know, it's more honorable. Sure. He said, fine. Then I found out that because he had carried the, the, um, the attitude that the Magi were not closely watching anything which it was like Neos or any, you know, the near Earth orbiting asteroids or anything like that. They weren't concerned about it at all. Well then subsequently during a conversation I found out that in fact they were. <coughs> this caused a mild du dust up which was then heightened because of information from her relative. The information from her relative was in fact that they were aware that there would be an Islamic attack upon the United States uh, as early, meaning they were aware as early as the mid-1990s that it would be coming sometime in the new millennium. Well, right on, smack on the beam. That made it worse. I had told him that if he ever lied to me again, I would make him pay a price for it. <coughs> the simple price was naming him. 
Okay. But and after that, I you know we've sent. There has been conversation with that particular individual since, and everybody's okay with everybody. I mean, you know, 20 years, more than 20 years. Um, I first met the gentleman at the at the back of the the lambs in the the the, the museum. More than 20 years since mid 1970s, relationship is not going to go by the wayside over a dust up. Sure, I understand. Um, but what I'm the reason I'm alluding to that is that here's a, 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 a case where I know you what you're alluding to. Okay. Where you don't know everything no, I about don't. what's happening. Mm -mm. And you haven't necessarily been clued in to everything. No, I haven't. And so you are telling me that we don't go both ways in Stargates. And this is what you've been told. Mm -hmm. Okay? And you are telling me that there's only two races, maybe a third that's, you know... Um, three, doesn't have uh, three races plus us, maybe a fourth. Okay, so so all I can say here is um, this is interesting because we have gotten testimony from a lot of different witnesses, people mm -hmm. who have different psychic abilities, uh, who have come mm -hmm. from the inside, from black ops, like our Henry Deacon, mm -hmm. telling us that that we are accessing Stargates constantly and going, in fact, between the Earth and Mars and going be between the Earth and the Moon, and possibly other places as well. In other words, not just that we're staying out of space or out of the Stargates because the Orions tell us to. Well, they were used. They were used in timeline number two to gradually access Moon and Mars. Now, there is a possibility that the information that he has, or had, has to do with a future timeline. That would make sense to me on that on that level, uh -huh. but not on the on the level of, hey, honey, let's take the kids to Olympus Mons today. No, but no. Um, how about if the military is sending equipment back and forth, uh, well, et cetera, et cetera? Okay. The Orions could trust us so much, where they could hand us a cube, and we misused it to the state that we misused it where they then had to inflict a treaty system upon us. Are they running our country? Are they running no. our world? No, no. They're simply constraining what we're able to do. No. No, we're running our own show down here. Uh, meaning when I say we, I'm not talking about the common folks that are, you know, like being starved to death every day. Mm -hmm. We're running our own show politically down here. Mm. These statements about well, these are mind controlled this or that, you know, automatons working for the ETs and the government. No, 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 no. These are good hearted and black hearted people, both, all fighting each other to run the geopolitical scenario. Mm -hmm. That that is an honest, you know, assessment from what I've seen what's going on. Um, but we are constrained as to what we are allowed to do. Uh, meaning where we are allowed presently to off-world. I understand. You know, you know, very nice, very nice. We placed our hands on our hips and underdog flew the American flag on the moon and we showed ourselves so wonderful and all of that over the Soviets. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that we're quite able at this point to go and camp out for too long. Okay, so now you're telling me why we're not theoretically, or we haven't gone back to the moon, at least overtly. We're busy, right, we're busy throwing sticks and stones at each other. And, and another reason why we're not, we, why we cannot go back there is part of the treaty system allows us to have a certain repository set somewhere on the moon. And that repository is presently there. Okay. And that is in case the T2 timeline should eventuate or there should be a, a, um, a geological or a, a, a global catastrophe uh, of like size. Okay, which and it's is the there. arc, what you've called the arc. Yeah, yeah. Okay, which, from what I understand, used to exist here on the planet. Well, in several pieces. Right, okay, so they took it up to the moon somehow. Uh, yeah, it was it assembled. Went the and the, it, no, no. Uh, that was going to, in fact, they were building equipment up north from here. And they ended up got getting it about three-quarter of the way built. 
Uh, I actually told Bill Hamilton about this when we were walking on the Jeep road out at Frenchman Mountain one night, and he says, well, where is it going to go? I looked like that and kind of pointed up, and there the orb was setting. He says, ah. Okay, but you uh, call it an arc. Is this, is this something that Well, that's that a nickname people, for it. But it sounds like it's going to save creatures. It's got genetic and tissue and other products. From us? Yeah. Okay, other creatures on the planet as well. Oh, yes, animals, oh, yes, plants. yes. A very good biodiversity, yes. I see. And from it's sitting on the moon in case there's something very bad that happens down here. Is that the yeah, idea? Yes. Okay. From the moon, where does it go? It doesn't. Oh, really? But the moon's not like, you know, the most inhabitable planet. Uh, no, there. but it's the place that we're allowed to be right now. Okay. Do I sound like I'm weighing my words? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, well, It's I mean, your job to ask the questions. It's my job to answer them as honestly and as truthfully as I am able while, okay. while being honorable and beneficial. Okay, and I and we and we do thank you for that. Um, you know, regardless of what other people think. Um, well, know, I mean, you know, I, there's a huge amount. I know the exact spot that the thing is setting there. All right, yes. I know what it looks like. I know how many pieces there are. I was involved in looking at and assisting with the biospherics on right. it. I know exactly where it sets, mm -hmm. and what happens if I say exactly where it sets? And something happens to it. Sure. I can't, I can't take that on my back. I understand. Go back to the 50s right. here for a second. An interesting uh, thing happened. We, you know, we were talking about the, um, the, the cube and all of that, and, and the meetings with, with Eisenhower um, and the Orions, the delegates. Um, an interesting thing, and I, I'm just referring to this, of course, uh, because it happens to reference from the uh, intelligence community the appropriate event, albeit it was being said at the time during a different context. Uh, this ha um, is referencing a um, hearing of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, the nomination of Mike McConnell to be Director of National Intelligence, and uh, this was at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time uh, on Thursday, February the 1st, 2007. And Mr. McConnell, uh, the Honorable um, Vice Admiral, said the following, quote, Senator, some years ago, I think 50s, 60s, there was a battle in the community with regard to authorities for signals intelligence. Of course, signals intelligence communication and uh, People can read between the lines, I think. And decisions were taken finally to cause the director of, Na of the National Security Agency to have responsibility for signals intelligence, or SIGINT, as we, refer, or as we refer to it, with regard to establishing priorities overseeing the technology, ensuring it's conducted in an appropriate way, the training standards are right, and investments are correct, and so on. I got a little report here, which was released on the 17th February of 2003. This was actually sent to me by Bill Hamilton, and it was written by a person named Matt Guza. I don't, I don't know who the person is, aside from Director IC, USUFOIC. And he reports the following. Aquarius background. Aquarius and other information. Um, it says, Aquarius findings briefly described below, because it was being, for some reason, Project Aquarius was being looked at very closely <laughs> at the time. Number one, from what we have found, we believe that it started in 1953 alongside of the Project Blue Book ordeal. Now, 53, let's think, what happened in 53? This is pretty much around the same time, general time frame as the Eisenhower thing, within a year. 53 was also the time when a certain craft dumped in uh, uh, Arizona, as I recall, uh, right near Kingman, 
involving two P plus 45 J rods and a P plus 52. The P45 was the one met by Bill uh, Uhouse, and of course the, uh, the P45 was the P52. Uh, I had the great honor. Uh, but the theory on the drawing board at this time is that it started uh, as an USAF black project and was overtaken by the intelligence community due to the content and the secrecy from investigating the past interest of the USAF and UFOs. It seems that the USAF weighed their investigation too much on non-scientific data. This would explain the need for the intelligence community investigation. So we can read between the lines here. Uh, herein, after finding, uh, uh, finding uh, and seeing this, or due to other issues, the intelligence community took Aquarius out of the hands of the USAF. Isn't okay, that funny how these two things coordinate with one another? Well, what do you, uh, okay, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say that... I uh, that there was an obvious mean? illusion, there was an obvious illusion here in the testimony to the, the Honorable uh, Vice Admiral McConnell. Right. Two situations which were going on during the 1950s uh, involving the, the present relationship between we and the extraterrestrial species. Yeah. Okay. There seems to be a, a rather direct correlation here. And then the fact that later on during the, the uh, intelligence community um, um, interview of Mr. McConnell, uh, there was even a, an a, allusion to, um, the same time well, to, a, to, a, uh, to timeline changes. Senator Rockefeller. This gives my heart good saying his name. I regret to say that my time has run out. And I think somebody's manipulating this clock because that much time hasn't gone by. Oh my heavens. And then a woman walked in who was from a, another committee. And that would be Susan Collins, I believe. But the fact that there was a manipulation of a clock comment going on and this, and there, there are several. Well, I've got it tabbed up as to, as to the relationships here, but What I'm trying to, I guess, show the folks is how things are said publicly. Yes, absolutely. So, but what is interesting is how many in Congress know what's really being said. Well, the, the, the head of the uh, committee here, this committee was chaired by John D. Rockefeller IV, Democrat of West Virginia. Uh, and there is a... I have no uh, doubt that Rockefeller is in the loop. But well, what, I, I have... I have little doubt that he is in the loop as well <laughs> and and may have been in the larger loop as opposed to not the majestic 12 loop anyway Meaning a member of the illuminati no 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 there there was a larger group that existed between 63 and 67 properly in approximately 2002 called the committee of the majority oh okay okay well then um all right. I mean, you know, you got people like uh, Rockefeller that can call the, the, the war that happened in 1991 as the Persian Gulf Procedure. That's right, he actually called it the Persian Gulf Procedure. Fascinating. It wasn't a procedure that I was in, but anyway. Um, okay, well, we've heard that, that since then it's now called, there's 40 members, and it's called, isn't it the PI-40? That's, that's an old name. that's an old name. That's an old name. That's an old name for it. So what you're saying or what is being said here is that there is some catastrophic events that have been mitigated to some degree hopefully by mm -hmm. a certain amount of unity on the planet and a certain amount of effort towards the positive. And I'm assuming and they, removal of equipment, yeah. Okay, but they mm -hmm. removed the equipment because the equipment told them to remove it. In other words, they removed the equipment because the history indicated that the equipment was operating during the time of the catastrophe and was a proximate cause to the catastrophe by increasing the amount of energy into our asthenosphere and causing a global catastrophe. Well, it, Geo, yeah, it's uh, just that. Yeah. In a sense, the equipment was telling, you know, it's, it's almost like... Uh, well, it was the equipment and it was the delegates. It was also the delegates to the treaties and and the representatives, including Meaning Kayla. The Ori Orions were saying, "Hey, hey, guys, it's the equipment. Shut it down, and you'll have better luck." Uh, they were they were the leading force in that. Yes. Really. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you something that's, that may 
come across a little controversial, but what? No, <laughs> we have been talking about such prosaic items all evening. No, but uh, what, I'm not certain I could. What makes you think that they had our best, um, uh, our best futures in mind when they told us to turn those, that equipment off? In other, other words, why should we believe them? Well, we should believe them simply because of the possibility and because, and because we're talking about four and a half billion up to five billion people here. All right. Now, let, let's think about this for a moment. If we leave the equipment in place and nothing happens, so what? What is the harm in removing it? Right. Now, that would be the, the corollary question to the question that you just asked. If they don't have our best interest at heart, how would our removing that equipment prevent the catastrophe that we're hearing about from three different cultures, meaning the Orions, the J-Rods, and the J-Rods from earlier times? How would removing that equipment proximate the, the catastrophe? Only leaving the equipment in, in place would be the dangerous move. So there's no harm in in, well, in like turning a, in turning you know in unloading a gun, but there is net, there is a possible harm in having it loaded. Sure, it's like the joke of believing in God. It's like the Sufi joke about whether you believe in God or not. If you if you don't believe in God and there is no God, there's no harm. But if you do believe in God and there is a God, it's going to be a good thing in the end, right? Well, may take you a few more trips back, but <laughs> okay. So, I don't know. That's up to God. <laughs> right. Well, in a sense, that's what you're saying. You know, this you're is a, this is an issue of practicality. Yeah. Uh, you know, if if we have a piece of equipment there that could possibly cause us harm, let's say let's say they're wrong and it doesn't. You better pull it apart anyway. We're talking about the you know the consequence of of nearly five billion people. Okay. What about we would be the stupid idea? not to, in other words. Okay. What about the natural stargates that still exist on the planet? Uh, there, what has been heard from from my background concerning the natural Stargate issue is is what was going on at Frenchman Mountain, and to access that they were using one of the Stargate devices. They had so it hauled out there. Saying, okay, I mean, for example, Sedona has, has several vortexes. Oh, sure, they're all over the place. Yeah, and there are several natural vortexes. Mm -hmm. You know, just to create even even. A cyclone or a hurricane creates a sort of a vortex. Sure. Okay. Sure. Through which certain races can travel in their ships, it is said. Okay? Okay. Do you have anything to say about that? No. Okay. Those are natural stargates. Oh, it, it, the, the meaning a portal which does not require uh, hardware? Sure. Oh. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Well, I, you know, I, I guess I could, I could probably make some sort of a comment relative Lotus. Uh, there is a, a a possibility that the portals that we're seeing during Project Lotus may be micro wormholes, and certainly, at least information is being carried through those portals from somewhere to here. And it's causing an effect in the environment. Uh, now, we're assessing presently to see whether or not they are naturally produced. And in August, owing to certain circumstances, we're planning on running tests out at Frenchman Mountain to determine whether or not it is a natural phenomenon. Um, possibly. Okay. I mean, you, you know, it, you you could say that a a uh, a travel in time could be a warp produced by a gravimetric device of a craft. You can move large distances in little to no time. So I'm not certain what the difference is physically or mathematically between that and what is being called an Einstein-Rosen bridge. Uh, you would need a physicist for that. I'm used to working on cells. And right. but. You know, and, and in a sense, if Lotus is creating s some kind of stargate effect, oh, that's wonderful. micro wormhole. That's wonderful if it is. it is. It is wonderful, but in a sense, you might also have to 
let go of Lotus in that sense if it is going to impact oh I have me. I have in, in fact but but for 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 more tangible reasons um, we were we brought the the fine art of producing these portals for demonstration up to a science uh, we knew exactly what to do, know exactly what to do to propagate them with nearly 100% efficiency. Um, they range in size thus far that we've seen between about um, 0.02 millimeters, so about 20 microns, to, to uh, up to a millimeter. Um, when we produce them now in the field, they're approximately a millimeter in diameter. And that's putting... Um, a heck of a lot of energy in, 50 times more energy than what we're what we would do through through the microscope, but we we brought it to the point where it was a a, a beautiful thing where I could hook the right uh, uh, optics train on the on the scope, propagate with the use of a laser and and electricity, and turn it on immediately on the surface of a silicate, uh, and then we started getting things coming through on this end or at least results in the medium around the crystal or around the silicate material that we were using, which were not normal. Um, cells of anomalous origin, uh, self-organizing um, cells, which appeared to be organizing in one case, uh, we did a variant of the ancient um, uh, Lazaro Spallanzani experiment, historic experiment concerning beef broth and uh, to, to uh, rule out spontaneous generation. Uh, and we had a very nice ABAB -AB neuronal type pattern formed by cells that were uh, self-organizing, and they were they were clearly um, morphologically they appeared like neurons in in this soup that we had, and and uh, so we had some real problems uh, developing. We had uh, two other consequences where uh, we had what uh, um, were produced were anomalous cells of unknown uh, well, quality we had life. and coming through. Well, okay. it, what we had is we had an organization, I think, going on on this end. Uh, now, we're, we're coming very close, and more is going to be said about a year about this, but we're coming, we're coming close uh, to determining the, the mechanism. Uh, and what it appears thus far is that there is a, an opening to a somewhere which is then placed in communication with our environment acoustically. And then there is a, a series of reactions with micro shards of uh, silicate material or micro shards of, uh, of quartz in our environment, which then become actually spontaneously or nearly so enclosed with material from our environment. And they move off to various locations and actually have effects on target cells in our environment. And so it, it, it's apparently based acoustically. Okay, um, but that's that's understandable, um, although it's complex, um, and I'm not a biologist, so I don't pretend to understand all of it. But I understand where you're going with this. But you still, but in essence, to get back to stargates, because that's the subject of this. Really? Um, Am I still? No, you're you're there. But the thing is that <sighs> what I'm curious about. I'm is... I'm loosening the 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 lock on the camera, so it gradually. <laughs> Is I'm I'm actually curious whether or not um, these natural stargates that do occur in nature are not being accessed by beings, whether they be the Orions or whoever, you know, at will into this dimension. Uh, I've got no information that the the P52 Orions or P52 J rods or the P45 uh, J rods are accessing such a system save the use of time travel technology gates to move from one spot to another and then the use of craft for moving from there to here. Uh, meaning to from a spot in reticulum for instance to a place in the Aquarius system Gliese Glice, or however it's uh -huh. properly said, and then which is the origin of, of, from what I understand, of Project Aquarius itself, because they were known to be coming from that direction, and that is, I believe, in the the Aquarius constellation. But um, because they're not, they're uh, not they use craft then to us. move from there to here. But they're they're using they're using uh, a gravimetric technology to warp time space. So I suppose that could be the same use, but. I don't think it's a situation kind of like 
you know, you walk out into a wilderness and you see a whole parade of people coming through a stargate <laughs> uh, with, you know, foreheads and 16 eyes and well, things like that. What about a parade of crafts? I, I don't know. Okay. It's the best answer I can give. Most honest one I can give. I don't know. I have not in 20 years of history uh, of, of, of history with Majestic heard of anything like that from them, meaning as part of a either a treaty system or an ongoing operation. Uh, however, however, I've also heard reports of craft being seen in the sky. I've seen craft in the sky, which I was not you know, directly involved, like the, the Mayboyer Park incident in 73. Uh, I've seen what I, what I believe, well, I have to say lights in the sky. Well, we've not craft. Seen, we've seen, um, come on, we've seen. She has seen craft. And, 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 you know, she's not feeding me full and a line of, of bull. You can stare at the sky and see the crafts zipping around. Well, there are meteors, too. No, and there are, there are also experimental aircraft uh -huh. uh, of various types. There are also back engineered uh, uh, um, aircraft, uh, which are, are being spotted, too. Um, okay, the, but the triangles. The thing is that according to what you're saying, there is a treaty in which we had stargates or access to wormholes that we mechanically opened and closed yes. based on a treaty system in which we, we were allowed to get information and, get, and send information back and forth, but that we didn't use to go out, but they used to come in, is what you're Substantially, you. yes. Okay. But we've closed all those down, yes. according to where, what you're telling us. Yes. Okay, so now I'm asking... Where's the yellow book? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But, but, if, if, but there are natural stargates out there that they can use any time they want. So they no longer have use of our stargates. So it's in a, in a sense of a treaty. Well, and... They and, and have access anywhere... Okay, anytime. if they do. Let's pause it if they do for a moment. The ones that we have to be concerned about would be the P-45s. Okay. Because they are looking to justify their own history. They would be very happy, aside from being paid off constantly, they would be very happy to see their own history justified. How are they paid off? Uh, they're paid off with technology, with assistance. In the past they were paid off with a certain number of abductions per year. What would they do uh, to those people? Aside from lo a longitudinal genetic drift study, that's enough. Uh, you know, people were, some of them were literally handed over, and I consider it illegal, and I consider it a, a uh, violation of, um, of international law, I consider it a crime against humanity. And that's why we did what, well, I did what I did. To, to stand up against it as best as I could and to get it off the books. What about the idea that some P-45s have shape-shifted, you know, excuse the terminology, but into human form, are here working in the government under a human form furthering their own, you know, uh, it's a substantial. It is a substantial probability that they have the ability because I've interacted with ones that would uh, ostensibly look human. And I really don't like talking about the so-called man in black or men in black Right, but uh, I understand when uh, you talk phenomenon. about the men in black, those were people that are beings that, you know, and, and you went in our last discussion into quite a description of that kind of being. But I'm talking about somebody who is acting like you and me, looking uh. like you and me, absolutely undetectable no and 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 still could be furthering or could even be if they are they're not j-rods if they are they're not j-rods um orions possible possible they okay. are very very brilliant people the short interactions very short interactions that i had with them i was impressed where Whereas I would not want to be spending that much time around P-45s at all, I, I would have enjoyed. Uh, I would have, I, I, in fact, I would have felt privileged speaking with them um, uh, further. Uh, are you talking about, when you say Orions, are you talking about the Nordics? 
I think that's how they're they're usually they're, they've been called talls or tall. Yeah, but I mean, they're they're they're, they're the essentially thing. yeah uh, um, you know the anthropomorphic uh, very tall uh, human beings with blonde hair, very large eyes, very blue, mm -hmm. pretty eyes, mm -hmm. uh, larger than our eyes as in ratio to to uh, cranium size. Um, the orbits are larger, etc. Um, just brilliant, just absolutely brilliant people. And I, w w what I found most intriguing about them is how they modulated what I consider their brilliance through emo emotion. I, the, the emotions coming them, from them were so less rudimentary, they were so more complex than what even I experienced with Kaela. I would have really enjoyed spending some more time with them. Okay, but they're here on this planet interacting with us, isn't it? Well, they interacted with us. I'm not certain if there are presently any on Earth or not right now. Okay. Um, I would say that, that you know, they're 50,000 years, a little more than that, ahead of us. But given the, the, uh, the, the similarity between body structure, between, between uh, size even and body structure, uh, um, cephalo th to, to thoracic ratio, similar enough. I think they could probably, uh, if their eyes didn't look the way their eyes look, they could probably get away with walking around. Okay. But their eyes are uh, they're way larger than ours, and uh, they look like essentially like these Bratz dolls that, that the little tween girls are going after nowadays. You know, the eyes are too large. You see these eyes, these hypersized eyes. I mean, it's fine on a Bratz doll, but if you walk this thing out onto the street, it's going to get picked out very quickly. Okay. So I, I just don't think so. Now, I, I, at the same time, I have to say, are they smart enough to probably get away with it? Figure out how? Maybe. Maybe. I doubt it, personally, because I, you know. I've met a lot of very interesting, but a lot of a few strange people in the last four and a half years talking with the public, who believe that there are literally reptilians walking around that are wearing masks and things like that. No, you know I'm a little more rooted in reality. I, I hate to put it that way, but uh, no, I joked with her. Uh, that I wanted to do something over at the, the first place where we were at for uh, for uh, my debriefing. I said, when the debriefing gets done, what I wanted to do is I wanted to hire some special effects people for real. <laughs> would end the debriefing, and then we would stop, and then we would begin filming with another camera. And I was going to, I was just suggesting a joke. It, it never got pulled off. No. Somebody... <laughs> What I was going to do is have a special effects person work up, work me up with my face over the top of a reptilian face, and I was going to rip it off and go, God, I'm tired of these human masks, and just have this little segment put out there as a joke. But she told me that people would take it seriously. I said people would believe it. You can't do that. People uh, will believe it. It's true. I, I, you know, I, I don't know. I've got a strange okay. sense of humor, I guess. I, okay, but, but you had a dealing with P45s, P52s. And, and these beings are, their, their treaty system is being adhered to, adhered to because they are here in underground bases monitoring us at all times because otherwise, how do they know that we are abiding by a so-called treaty? Because sup supposedly we broke treaties. Isn't this, isn't this right? Uh, well, we have, we have um, strained. <laughs> oh, oh, I've got to be... We have strained the treaty system more than once. So have the P-45s. Right. So uh, we have, in fact, we have, in fact, come into conflict with one another at certain times. These conflicts have been amicably resolved, uh, and we are are presently in an amicable state with one another. Um, we're not the only ones with the looking glass technology that can look in to other timelines. In other words, they have the equipment too. Sure. And so it's not that difficult 
for those who might be wishing to enforce the treaty on their great great ancestors we to look into the present time as a an expression of them looking into their own past and watching it change okay so are in a sense you're saying they know what we're going to do before we do it they know the probabilities and so they are they are substantially capable of interacting with us if they feel that those probabilities are moving to eventuate their own history uh, as they have it written for them as okay, being an outcome so and they, they words, find that the P-52s, P-52s find that as, a, as a, an unacceptable outcome. So they're pushing their advantage whenever they can. They're pushing the advantage of not justifying their own past so that they may either split off on their own timeline but that their own history would not eventuate a catastrophe now if you consider that pushing their own advantage sure now the p-45s the characterization that you placed pushing their own advantage i would say that that was a, an appropriate characterization well, I that was they would be yeah that. yeah yeah the, the p-52s are, are much more amicable and a little farther along um, um, I just say that they, they're a little more spiritually adept, the P-52 Orions, uh, certainly more than the P-45 J-Rods. Uh, they're extremely mechanical, very, very logical, uh, yet uh, ruthless. Extremely. You're speaking of the P-45. Yeah, they have no problem picking up somebody like me out of the middle of a park and shoving a, pro a probe up his wazoo to test him, yeah. Yeah, they've got no problem with that at all. Uh, I have, however, a substantial problem with that. And I think other folks who have been uh, largely abducted, not everybody, but you know, a fair, fair number of them also have a problem with that. Okay, what about the idea that um, we, ha we have somebody, Jim Sparks, I don't know if you know who he is. He's written a book called The Keepers um, recently. I'm, I'm, a, I'm aware of Jim Sparks as he is the personal friend of... Uh, a couple of folks with whom we uh, became close acquaintances, uh, and okay. Okay, so he's telling us that he has conscious recall of his abduction experiences, mm -hmm. and that he, that groups of people were abducted by what sounds like P-45s because mm -hmm. they have real issues with control, um, mm -hmm. and put in, in Boy, front. Boy, that of was said nicely. <laughs> And put in front of computer screens and shown, uh, you know, scenes of the Earth, um, you know, first a beautiful Earth and potentially, you know, fantastic um, futures, and then shown the opposite of that. So that, that what would be generated in these people is a love of the planet and a desire to make it a better place. Mm -hmm. And also there is an aim to this. They are aware that our emotions affect our state, our physical state, that our, our orientation to the, to the energies which are available from the, the cosmos, if you will, uh, affect the state of our DNA, affect the state of our health, and they are applying that as a, an experimental protocol, a rubric, if you will, to change the state of the people on board so that they can sample them for biological material. The fact of what we take away from it is aside the point. Okay. That, that, that is just whatever we take away and then it's our take on it and then a person, an experiencer, if you will, then goes off into our world and says how he or she feels about the experiment uh, or about what they were subjected to or what, about what they were shown. But there is a cold, hard, cruel reality involved here that we are being picked up from biological material as an experimental protocol. Okay, meaning what these people that are being abducted are, are doing is providing, you know, DNA, providing eggs and sperm so that they can, what, experiment or create their own future beings? Uh, what they're trying to do is they're trying to ameliorate their own neuropathology, which is already starting and is becoming an issue within their populace at their timeline concerning reproduction. 
But how many as people a, do they need to, to figure that out? Well, <laughs> as many as the, what they wanted to take until they get the answer figured out, and they really don't care because it's the old proposition of, of the anthill uh, along the side of the road in Africa. Uh, you know, you, you, we are to them, from their perspective, the ants on the anthill, and how would we feel about stepping on one or two ants or a few million ants out of an anthill? Uh, it, it may cause a few people with, I consider higher intelligence, some moral problems just stepping on them, but you know, how much would we really care about that? They feel that way about us. They want to use us as biological material, watch us get destroyed to, to, to um, justify their own background, their own history, and at the same time take the biological material from us and solve their own personal present problems. Okay, but how are we fighting them? What do you mean? In other words, you've just told me they have a tremendous amount of control they're abducting huge number of people and they're continuing their experiments. Well, they have. Uh, the numbers who are being abducted now are not treaty related. In other words, there is nobody being taken presently. Zero authorized by treaty. I can't stop them from taking people out of their beds at night, but I did influence the other. Is it rolling? I'm rolling. Yep. Is H.G. Wells, uh, it, the epilogue in his time machine, I, I, I read the, the time machine by H.G. Wells. I keep this on my desk. Okay. It says, one cannot choose but to wonder, will he ever return? It may be that he swept back into the past and fell among the blood-drinking hairy savages of the age of unpolished stone, into the abyss of the Cretaceous Sea, or among the grotesque saurians, the huge reptilian brutes of the Jurassic times. He may even now if I may use the phrase, be wandering on some plesiosaurus haunted oolitic coral reef, or beside the lonely saline links of the Triassic Age, or did he go forward into one of the nearer ages in which men and still are still men, but with the riddles of our own time answered and its wearisome problems solved? Into the manhood of the race, for I, for my own part, cannot think that these latter days of weak experiment, fragmentary theory, and mutual discord are indeed man's culminating time. I say for my own part, he I know, for the question had been discussed among us long before the time machine was made, thought but cheerlessly of the advancement of mankind and saw in the growing pile of civilization only a foolish heaping that must inevitably fall back upon and destroy its makers in the end. If that is so, it remains for us to live as though it were not so. But to me the future is still black and blank, is a vast ignorance, lit at a few casual places by the memory of his story. And I have by me for my comfort two strange white flowers shriveled now, and brown and flat and brittle to witness that even when mind and strength had gone, gratitude and a mutual tenderness still lived on in the heart of man. That, mean, that means a lot to me. I actually hold on to that. And I hold on to that so much um, as, as such a prescient bit of thought um, that I actually keep um, the flowers from my great-grandmother's grave uh, in there with it. You know, I don't know what's going to happen in the future and all I can do is hope like everybody else and pray like everybody else. Okay, well, thank you, Dan. Um, you know, and I understand that we've, we've actually overtaxed you and, and asked you, you know, uh, an incredible amount of, of information here and you've been very generous and, and I really want to thank you. Well, it, it's my, it's my responsibility Hamlet. to say truth. Okay, well, you, you definitely do that. And um, what I would like to also say is how do we fight them for the people that are out there? And what we know is unity is one way in which we are progressing out of a certain timeline into another, right? Yes. Okay. 
But if you have it's, anything it's, it's, else it's, it's, to it's, add to that well, like for to people. Well, to okay. me, it's a unit. Constant vigilance. Yes. Constant that's, vigilance. That's good. That's very good. Constant okay. vigilance. Uh, also, there are many operatives, not just like Marcia and myself, but many operatives who are coming out of the old Majestic who have had experiences like this. Most of those operatives are not willing to say anything. However, that doesn't mean that they're not doing things. We are acting in concert with some of those operatives and with other groups to try to motivate the, the information from the inside which could be used for the beneficial application for humanity uh, to humanity. And we're doing our very best uh, to motivate that through and some of it is, is being seen in very little snippets of it, uh, the projects that we're proposing that are going to be coming in the future like Argo and ISIS. Um, I guess the only thing I could I can really say aside from the constant vigilance is is to act to the right when a wrong needs to be righted or there needs to be a stand taken for what is right versus wrong that that our present time doesn't mean that we have to that we're so modern we have to get rid of the ideal for the real we create our own reality and so we should in my view act toward the ideal to create a better real for ourselves mm -hmm.